how to put a lightweight flywheel in your 2011 Porsche Boxster Spider. So let's get started. The first thing we're gonna do is raise this car up as high as we can. We're gonna be using quick jacks today with SUV extenders. Everything used in this video today will be linked in the description below. So let's get going. Believe it or not, uh, even with the quick jacks in its full position, it is not enough room to actually drop your transmission out of the car and clear it and slide it out. So what you're gonna need are these SUV extenders that quick jack sells. It'll give you an extra eight inches of room when you go to raise the car up. I have linked these in the description below. So let's go throw those on. Okay guys, so what I did was I uh, lowered the car. Well, first I took off this, uh, this front panel here so I could access where the structural support is of the front suspension, both left and right. And I put a jack stand on these. So what I did was I lowered the quick jacks down onto these two front jacks. And then for the rear, I used my transmission jack. Okay, and you can see we're here on this like um, trapezoidal brace. So now the quick jacks are on the ground. You're gonna go load up your SUV risers and then you're gonna go raise up the quick jacks to go re-engage the, the lift points. All right, as you can see here, we've got the car lifted up on both the SUV risers and the quick jacks. That's gonna give us enough room to drop the transmission out. And they give you a set to scale from the bottom of the pan, uh, sorry, bottom of the floor to the pan, it's around 23 and a half inches. With the car in the air, go ahead and take off both rear wheels. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is remove one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight bolts to drop this silver pan out. All right, so you had to do uh, one nut, two nut, three, four, and on the uh, opposite side as well. What you can do is you can bend this down and then you can slide this panel out. Now we're gonna do the uh, rear anti-roll bar. So we're gonna do uh, the drop link on both sides, as well as uh, these two uh, bolts right here, as well as these two bolts right here, and the whole bar will come out. Go ahead and loosen the left and right uh, sway bar from the drop link using a wrench here and here. Remember, if you have adjustable sway bars, remember the position that your hole was in. We are gonna focus on removing the exhaust next, so go ahead and remove this uh, heat shield on both the left and right side of the car going to be a 10 millimeter um, socket here and here and I think it's a T25 and it is a T25 yes so go ahead and remove that. Once this fashions are out this just pulls off and out of the way. They have access to these uh, three flange bolts here these are going to be 13 so go ahead and remove them on both sides of the car to go and loosen up the muffler side of the exhaust and here is just a better view of those bolts. Once those flanges are loosened up you're going to go to the muffler and do this bolt this bolt as well as this bolt and this bolt. And that will release the mufflers from any of the hanging bracket as well as the connection uh, to the uh, headers here. All right, guys, the uh, exhaust slides out as one piece here. You see where it came out of the car. Next thing we're gonna do is uh, use an E12 for these one, two, three, four bolts right here to remove the uh, exhaust hanger bracket off. All right, guys, next thing you have to do, there's gonna be an exhaust hanger bracket here. It's these four bolts. One, two, three, four. Pull that off the car. And then the next thing you're gonna have to do is disconnect the uh, drive axles, uh, depending on what car you have. I don't know what, what driver you're gonna use, but it's gonna be six bolts to go around the drive axle. Make sure your e-brake is on to, to do that. And then from there, also depending on what kind of car you have, you're gonna do uh, the clutch line, the slice cylinder line, it's right here. Uh, on this cart, it's a 2011. You're gonna have this like little metal horseshoe bracket right there. You're gonna pretty much pull it from the left side of the screen to the right, and then that will unlock the, uh, the tab here so that you can now pull this clutch line out. Have a little rubber stopper ready. One of these guys to go uh, cap off so that the clutch flow doesn't pull off your, off your garage. And then from there, also you're gonna go unbolt the transmission mount right here on the left and the right side of the car. While you do that, make sure you support uh, the engine and transmission from below so that doesn't all fall down. And so let's go pull out the clutch line and go to the next step. 
So you can see here, we uh, pulled the clutch line off the, uh, the slave master cylinder right here. And all I did was I just plugged the end with uh, one of those little vacuum stoppers. And now what we're gonna do is access your reverse light switch, which for me is this black hunter right here. So go ahead and remove this guy. Also get your, uh, your shifter cables out. You're on both sides of the car. So this should pretty much just get, get a little screwdriver in there, pull that guy out. So cables on this side to get a little flathead, pop it off the ball and socket. That's on the passenger side. And then on the driver's side, you're gonna have it uh, right here. And here's the cable that's gonna pop off right there. Make sure you unbolt it or unclip it um, from the, uh, the brace on the body. All right, you can see here the uh, reverse light switch unplugged. Make sure you go and take this out of these, uh, these little connectors right here so that when you go to pull the transmission down, the cable does not come with it. And now we're going to go work on the driver's side of the transmission. And there's going to be this little connector right here, this, this black one. Go ahead and get a faster on there and you unplug that so that there's no cable on the transmission. All right, guys, the transmission's out of the car, so let me give you a quick little overview here. You're gonna have, for my 2011 Spider, one, two, uh, three, four, five, six uh, bolts. They're all equal length, okay? Some things that you might want to do to help you out get these transmission mounts out of the way. It's kind of hard to get in there. Um, so do your best to remove that. And then highly recommend, highly, highly, highly recommend you get a proper transmission jack that has the fore and aft uh, so you can rock around. Don't do it on like a normal jack. I mean, you could, but then what I like to do is use a floor jack with a bottle jack on some wood on the oil pan uh, pretty much just to support the engine what i like about this is that I, is that i can do fine adjustments with the bottle jack to uh, raise and lower the engine as needed make sure your drive shafts are out of the way and then you can use a little pry bar just to get you know started between the uh, engine and the uh, transmission to get a little gap there and you need to slide it all out make sure you chain it in place right here Next thing we're gonna do is remove the clutch. All right, next thing we're gonna do is remove one, two, three, four, five, six E10 uh, bolts. We'll go ahead and do that right now. All right, guys, so pretty much uh, this just uh, pulls off the car. Uh, you're gonna have some alignment pins right here and right here. Uh, that's gonna help uh, center uh, this actual uh, pressure plate uh, onto your clutch here. Uh, additionally, uh, your your clutch, uh, you're gonna have this this uh, this this feature on the clutch disc itself is gonna be facing away from the uh, the flywheel. And then at this point, what you should probably do is, is inspect for wear. Uh, I would say my looks pretty pretty worn out. So I'm gonna order a new clutch at this point. I uh, definitely would not advise putting this back in. I'll drop in the description below uh, some specs for for, uh, for wear and everything. Probably get a new pressure plate in here while I'm at it. Additionally, uh, you should inspect your, 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 your release bearing. Uh, mine seems pretty wobbly. So I'll we'll order one of these as well. I'll put a link in the description for that. The next thing we're going to do is remove these. There's a lot of, sorry, there's a lot of bolts here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten bolts right here. And these are a triple square bolt. So we're going to remove that. And that's going to allow our flywheel to come off. It's going to come in here and uh, clean up some of this, uh, this like, clutch soot. So I can get good contact with these bolts. Definitely wear some eye protection. Put a pan down.
All right. Let's see all what uh, came off out of there. Pretty nasty. Hey guys, I'm gonna recommend you use a really nice impact gun uh, with a high breakaway port. Uh, these bolts will probably be red Loctited in place. As you can see here, um, I tried to fix the flywheel with some you know, nuts and these uh, alignment pins in place so it wouldn't rotate as you go to put like a ratchet on there. Um, however, uh, I just could not get enough torque to break these loose, so I do recommend uh, making sure you have really good contact uh, with your uh, driver and the fastener head so you can go use an impact and take these off. Just like this. And push in hard. Okay, just like that. You do that for all 10 bolts. All right, a little before and after. So here is the stock flywheel for the car. And you can see right here, it's gonna be 26.4 pounds. All right, and then the lightweight flywheel, that is gonna be 12.2 pounds. Pretty exciting, um, actually this is gonna be absolutely insane. I can't believe it weighs so little. Uh, this car should rev like a fucking Ferrari GT. So let's get going. How to tell if your clutch is worn out on your Porsche. So here's the old flywheel, the new flywheel is gonna go in the car. The clutch that came out, and here's the pressure plate. So what you do, for this is going to go onto the uh, the new flywheel. What you want to do is measure the, the depth from measure the depth from this friction surface right here, this friction surface right here, down to the flange part of this rivet. Okay, this this is the part of the rivet, flange part of the rivet. These rivets hold both the front and uh, back part of this uh, clutch together. Okay. So this, so this side goes into the flywheel. This top side here goes onto your pressure plate, which is this, this, it wears onto there. So take your, uh, take some, uh, some calipers, okay? And you're gonna use the, zero these out. You're gonna use the, the depth measurement on here. You're gonna span the, the flange part of that rivet and take that measurement. So for mine, that's 1.36 millimeters. If this is less than 0.3 millimeters, you need a new clutch. Um, the Porsche factory says a brand new clutch. That that depth measurement from, from this friction material surface to that flange part of the nut is quote unquote greater than 1.0 millimeters. So again, if that is less than 0.3, you need a new clutch. If it's, if it's greater than that, then you don't. So this will help you out when you go to work in your car. Right now I'm doing a lightweight flywheel on this thing. The emission's out, so I almost ordered a new clutch. I kind of looked at, uh, you know, the side here. I thought it was pretty thin. Turns out, good to go. All right, it was time to put the new flywheel back in. One thing to keep in note when you put it back on is there's a dowel pin that is on the engine uh, side of this. And you just gotta align that dowel pin with the hole on the new flywheel. Um, I went ahead and put all these bolts in just with like an impact gun. I mean, nothing crazy, just, just a, a little guy just to get them started. And now I'm gonna back all these bolts out and then I'm gonna go apply uh, just a little dab of uh, Loctite 242, I mean, just like a drop. And then um, ASCO sends this little torque thing. So these are all M10 by 1.0. Uh, bolts and they recommend you to work it down to 55 foot, 55 foot pounds. Uh, that does contradict what Porsche says, which is to uh, seat the bolt like 19.8 foot pounds and then rotate the bolt 120 degrees. So whatever torque that is, that's what they recommend. I'm going to go with the 55 foot pounds and this one little dot of locked, uh, red Loctite, keep this in place, and then we're going to go wipe down this face with some acetone and continue on. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention is that you need to use the supplied uh, steel washer. If you ever want to go put these bolt heads onto aluminum, steel bolts into aluminum, it's not going to work. And additionally, uh, this has to be clocked correctly. You'll maybe notice that there's an orientation in this really. It doesn't really line up too well. So just choose the orientation where all the holes look good and you know, it's, it's kind of oddly keyed. You can see down here, there's uh, the holes that aren't lined up. but this orientation looks perfect. So at this point, I'm just gonna go and put 
a tiny little dab of Loctite 242 onto this. Just a little, a little dot, just like that. That's all I'm going to use. And I will start this with my impact. Um, that, that way I can just kind of like speed all these into place. Um, once again, just a Loctite 242. Just a little tiny little bit. Don't want to use too much because in case you got to remove this one day, you want to make sure this is still removable. Okay. We are going to go back and torque all these down. So, all right, I'm going to go install these <coughs> also in a star pattern. Uh, so, yeah, so let's go uh, resume later. All right, now we're going to go torque these bolts down to 58 uh, foot pounds. And what you may notice is that as you go to turn this, the entire flywheel turns. What I did was I put a, uh, here's your doubt, here's your alignment pin right here, wrench, put a bolt through the open side of the wrench. And now when I go to turn this, tighten it, the flywheel can't move. All right, everything has been torqued down, so now we can go and remove uh, this bolt here. Perfect. Okay. Uh, now what we're going to do is wipe this entire surface right here uh, with some brake clean. Really want to make sure that the surface is clean and ready to receive our uh, our clutch. No oils or residues on this. All right, so I'm gonna go uh, insert uh, my clutch alignment tool right here, okay? And then I'm gonna go put the clutch plate on top right here. You see how it's all gonna wobble around. Uh, but what you can do is you can turn this, and what has, what's that doing, it's, it's expanding inside of this right here. And now, you are perfectly uh, concentric to this uh, flywheel. At this point, uh, we can take our pressure plate and use all of the alignment pins on here. So, probably get this wrong first time, but just bear with me. Uh, actually, I got it right immediately. Okay, so pin right there, pin right there, pin right there. All my holes are lined up. And now I'm going to take a uh, pressure plate fastener and just uh, finger uh, tighten them on all around, get them all started. All right, as I mentioned, we're going to use the E10 socket with the uh, pressure plate bolts, and we're just going to go and just get these started. Using the lowest torque on my impact here. At this point, now that we've got some, uh, some force pushing on the clutch, we can now remove the center uh, alignment tool. Uh, now that we've pretty much got some of these uh, these bolts here uh, kind of like loosely tightened down, I will give them a little extra, tiny little snug. It's just enough to hold the pressure plate uh, to the clutch disc Itself. Go ahead and remove our alignment tool. We're going to do that by, for this model right here, we're going to loosen this up. It's going to contract those inner, and this just pulls right out. So, what I like about this is as you turn this, watch this. See how those black features expand out? So, that will center the spline as well as the uh, bearing. So, you can see everything is. Pretty much in line there. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and torque all these bolts down to 20 foot pounds. All right, some other things I did was I removed this fastener right here, uh, slid the clutch fork off. So this is your slave master cylinder right here. Pushes on this piston, which causes uh, this to push onto the pressure plate. And, um, and then that allows you to change gears. Uh, I went ahead and lubed the shaft while everything was off and has cleaned up this uh, release bearing surface to make sure there are no oils, et cetera, on there. 
now we're gonna go and put this back into the car. All right, guys, with a little movie magic and the assistance of my transmission jack, this is back into place. You need to make sure that these splines are aligned with the, uh, the clutch and the, uh, the, the shaft of the transmission. Uh, once you do that, if they aren't aligned and you go to put this back in, you can rotate uh, the left transaxle and the right transaxle at the same time, rotate it, and that'll move the spline a couple degrees and you can try again, getting it to line up. Uh, at this point, what you're gonna do is tighten all of the, uh, the bell housing bolts that go from the engine to the transmission to 63 foot pounds. There's one, uh, two, three, four, five, six. Those are all down to 63 foot pounds and you're gonna use a transmission jack. I highly recommend this one right here. You can do uh, four front and back, left and right on this articulation here. And I'll help give you the play you need to put this back into place. And I will leave this in the description below of the video. To uh, give yourself a hand with putting uh, the transmission back on the car, I do recommend removing the left and right uh, transmission bracket off the car. Uh, you're gonna keep this assembly in place and there's gonna be these two bolts I go through this sub member right here. One, two, uh, three, four. So the left and right bracket, take it off as one unit. And, and then I'll help you uh, put the transmission back into place. The next thing we're gonna do is actually reinstall these. And according to uh, Porsche here, uh, the bolts uh, where it says it's error right here, needs to get tightened down to uh, 24 foot pounds and the bolts that go into the transmission themselves, uh, that's gonna be 48 foot pounds. So to show you what the car here, um, this bolt here and this bolt here, 48 foot pounds. And then this one here and this one right here, that's gonna be 24 foot pounds. Now I'm gonna go install the transmission bracket, uh, two bolts here, one here on the side, 24 foot pounds. Then join that to the transmission, one here, one here, and it's gonna be 48 foot pounds. The uh, next thing we're going to do is take this black sensor right here and run a T40 bolt um, drive into there and secure it to the block. Before I hook up this, uh, this cable, this ball and socket right here to the, uh, the shift mechanism, I'm actually going to go undo the slay cylinder plug right here. And I'm going to go plug in the hydraulic line. So I'm going to go pop the little rubber nipple off there. And then you can barely see there's those little metal bracket. So once you pop this off, you plug this in, slot the metal bracket in, and then I'll secure the, uh, the, the clutch line to the transmission. Now that the, uh, the clutch line is, is clipped in, I'm going to take this and clip it in right here. Just a little, just like that. And now I'm going to take the shift cable, push it on this ball right here. Next thing I did was attach the uh, shifter cable on the passenger side of the transmission. You may need to uh, grab a new uh, little uh, bushing right here. I will, you, I'll, I will link one of these in the description of the video below. Take your reverse light switch, put it into the transmission right there. And then just make sure you route it into these little uh, clips as well. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is uh, put the uh, transaxles back in place. It's gonna go right here and we're gonna take our bolts here. There's gonna be six of them and they're gonna be torqued down to 60 foot pounds. Uh, make sure you include the, uh, we'll call it a washer, uh, but this little bracket here so that the bolts uh, bolt down to that. All right, next order of business is gonna be mounting this exhaust hanger to the back of the transmission with these four these four outer torques. Uh, let's go ahead and put that on. And I'll be torqued to 17 foot pounds. Next we're gonna do is take this Travis label bracket, these two bolts which go 48 foot pounds on the upper left and upper right. Next we have to take this muffler and put it on the car. So you go over these uh, drive axles right here, three bolts. And then you go on the exhaust uh, flange. You're gonna to wanna to attach these two bolts right here on the left and right, two bolts right there. So those two bolts you're gonna to attach to the muffler. This is the exhaust header to the muffler flange to go around the car. They get a new metal gasket for a one-time use. They're gonna be a crushed new uh, gasket on the corner. You see in the video. Uh, you can also want to go and grab some anti-seize on these bolts real quick. If you have the uh, Porsche Sport exhaust, you're gonna take your vacuum line and see this one. Right here. There's also the vacuum hose you're going to attach up top there. Make sure you route that 
All right, next thing we're gonna do is take this bottom panel right here, and we're gonna go slide it uh, back into place and fasten it down. Once you slide it in, go ahead and torque all these nuts to uh, 48 foot-pounds. Next thing we're gonna do is take the sway bar and uh, pretty much slide it over that panel. And we're gonna uh, just loosely hook it up at the toe link right here, as well as the bushing mount right here, just finger tight. All right, go ahead and tighten these uh, two bolts here, which holds the rubber bushing to the subframe of the car to 17 foot-pounds. And then this bolt right here is gonna be 48 foot-pounds. Now is a great time to adjust your rear sway bar. Give you a little uh, advice here. This is full tight, this is full loose. Think of the torque arm. If you want it full tight, you'll have more grip at the front. If you want it full loose, you'll have less grip at the front. So this is like more oversteer and this is more understeer. All right, the only thing left we have to do is just put the wheels back on the car and lower it down on the quick jacks, off the quick jacks uh, using the reverse procedure. Uh, in the description of the video below, I've put a link on how to change your clutch fluid because we disconnected the uh, clutch slave master cylinder line uh, from the, uh, the, the slave master cylinder. So you may wanna bleed your clutch at this point. Also, I put in the description um, how to change your transmission fluid and kind of flush it out. Uh, this car gets driven pretty hard, so I do like doing my transmission fluid every like 30,000 miles. Uh, only use Porsche specific uh, manual transmission fluid as well. Uh, if you have any questions at all, put it in the comment below. I'd also really, I, hope, I would also really appreciate a super thanks. Uh, put a lot of time in making this video and helping you guys out. Uh, it's not needed, but we really help the channel. Uh, consider subscribing and if you have any questions at all put in the comment below and we'll see you next time.